Hi, I'm Stephen with AlbertaUrbanGarden.ca. If you have access to a patio, balcony, or deck, you've got a small space that is perfect for container gardening. Before you get going, make sure your deck gets direct sunlight for at least part of the day. Typically, the best decks for gardening face south, then west, and then east. I started container gardening when I first moved to Alberta. This was the best option for me as I was renting and had to move from time to time. Container gardening doesn't really require a lot of space and the containers can really be made of anything that will hold soil and freely drain out the bottom. I've noticed my local buy and sell websites often have free or very cheap containers for sale. Over the years for my birthday, I have been given self-watering containers which I prefer. I've also collected a few bag containers which are great. They work well during the growing season and are very easy to store during the winter. If you're looking to grow using self-watering containers and grow bags a little more economically, you can go to any large box store and do it yourself with some storage totes, some reusable shopping bags, and a children's pool. One of the limitations of container gardening is when the weather gets really warm, they tend to dry out faster than garden beds as they have a smaller volume. The benefits of self-watering containers is that they have a water reserve in the bottom and can wick the water up as the plants need it. Using a wicking bed is also a great way to conserve water as it draws up through the soil and is used by the plant. There is far less evaporation on the soil surface. Add in a mulch layer and you're not only feeding the soil but you're conserving even more water. In order to help the wicking process, I use a combination of soilless potting mix and compost or vermicompost. I usually do this at a one-to-one -one ratio, but if you're short on compost or have to purchase it, you can go down to a three-part soilless potting mix, one-part compost, and it will do just fine. The soilless potting mix will wick and retain moisture, and the compost will provide the nutrients the plant needs to grow. When I have vermicompost available, I add it to the mix, as it adds nutrient-rich castings, increases water retention, and the live composting worms will continue to add beneficial organisms and plant growth hormones, all the while breaking down any mulch you have left them. It has been my experience that compost and vermicompost provide more than enough nutrients throughout the growing season, and that store-bought fertilizers are simply not necessary. You can grow a wide variety of annuals in containers. This year on my deck, I will be growing tomatoes, peas, peppers, and a variety of herbs for the kitchen, including basil, cilantro, thyme, and rosemary. I like having the herbs we use more often closer to the kitchen, and snacks like cherry tomatoes at hand. Our last frost date has passed, and the established plants have hardened off. I like to plant both adult plants and direct sow seeds. Having the adult plants lets me harvest right away, while the seeds will provide crops later in the season. I like to plant a variety of crops in my containers and fill up every little space. A wide variety of crops using all the available space increases harvests, reduces predation as it is usually a polyculture, and the canopy helps to prevent unnecessary evaporative losses while outcompeting weeds that may blow in. I plant my tomatoes and larger plants at the back in order to avoid shading and to take advantage of the airspace over the edge of the container to add more usable space. Containers are a great way to grow invasive plants like mint that if left alone in the garden can take over large areas. I have planted some mint as ground cover for my honeyberries and have dedicated this container completely to mint. Many perennials also make great container plants. This year I have added a dwarf grapevine and two fig trees to my container honeyberries. These perennials are not in self-watering containers and will need nutrients over time, so I have used a compost-heavy mix made of free and local resources. Perennials in containers will require a little more work during the winter, as they don't have the soil around them to insulate their roots from the cold winter temperatures. For the less hardy ones, what I'll do is I'll actually just bring them into the garage where it hovers around the freezing mark, and the more hardy ones I'll insulate with autumn leaves and snow. As I mentioned earlier, you will need to make sure that the containers are watered, as their smaller volume of soil dries out much quicker than, say, a raised bed. This leads me to a very interesting question I've wanted to address for a while. Does the chlorine in city water actually kill the beneficial bacteria and organisms within the soil? I'll be addressing this on the next installment of Testing Garden Assumptions. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it very much, and I hope you have a fantastic day.